what I've done is I've put some, uh, some things that uh, I have found over the years. What I would like to do, my purpose tonight, is just to share some information and share some of my experiences. I've been here over 30 years. I have gone from uh, advising students to being department head. I've stayed in touch with students and I've followed their careers. Um, what I would like to do is to share some of the things that I have seen over the years with you to help you with your decision making process. This is not a pitch to sell books, but what I have done, one of the things I decided to do about five years ago was to put all of um, my experiences dealing with UMass sport management students and careers into a book. And what you see here is different than what you see up there. This is the first edition, this is the second edition, which comes out in mid-March. This is not a pitch, as I said, to sell books. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to donate a number of these books to the library. They will be on reserve, so if you think that anything in here might be helpful to you, it's accessible to you. The most important thing is for you to get the information that's in here. Let me just give you an idea of what's in the book. There are five different sections to the book. And what I'm going to talk on today primarily is what's in this first section. These are all things in terms of the job search, from education to planning to mapping to making decisions, where to get resources, mentors, all of those things that I think are important for you. The second section, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but think about who raised their hand to be in pro sports. You will see by my rough estimate that about half the people in here raised their hands when I, went to, when I asked if you're interested in team sports. Okay? And, and think of the fact that there are now over 200 sport management programs in the country. So you take all of the people here who are applying to pro team sports and all of the people around the country in sport management programs and in addition to that people who aren't even in a sport management program applying. So in terms of the competition it is much more significant when you get to popular things. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, but what I'm going to say and I'm going to show you is you've got to take that into consideration. What I do in this section of the book and what I would ask you to do before you decide exactly what you want to do is to think broadly. Think of, across the entire spectrum of the sports industry and see if any of it fits for you. Okay? Now, if you look at the whole spectrum of the industry and you come back and say, you know, after I looked at all of it, I want professional team sports, then go ahead and do it. But at least you've gone through that process. <coughs> okay? The other thing that I think is very important for you, and I've done some work in this area, and I call it career tracks. Okay? How do people get to leadership <coughs> positions? A lot of people come in and talk to me and say, I want to be general manager of a baseball team. <coughs> I want to be an NBA general manager. I want to be an athletic director. Okay? Well, what does it take for you to be in that position? Well, one of the things I say is look at the people who are currently in that position. See what kind of education they have. See what kind of experience they have. See what kind of internships they have. See what kind of work experience. See what kind of skills. And then you can compare yourself to that and map out a plan in terms of how to get there. So what I've done in the last several years is to look at baseball general managers, basketball general managers, National Football League general managers, Division I ADs in college and Division III ADs, and I said, let me look at all of them who are in that position now and let me get a profile. What do they look like? Okay? And then I went back 10 years and 20 years to get profiles for what the ADs and GMs looked like at that time so I could say, okay, how much have they changed? So you'll see, for example, when you look at this, that education becomes more important, and graduate education might become more important. So as a slice of that, and as an example, what I have up here are Major League Baseball general managers. Okay, there's only 30 of them. Okay, so some of the questions I sometimes get asked are, um, for example, how many play professional baseball? Well, 9 out of 30. Okay, 23 out of 30 went to and got a BS. Okay. Five of the 30 GMs have an advanced degree. Okay? 19 major league general managers play college baseball. Okay? So now here's what you should be thinking. If you're not on a college baseball team right now, okay, that's probably not going to be the path for you. So you need to look at the other 11. And the other 11 probably are more likely to have a graduate degree. 
What does that answer? Okay, that answers the question, will it be helpful for you to get a graduate degree? And if you don't have a lot of college baseball playing experience, for example, or pro baseball playing experience, then you have to make it up somewhere else. And education or experience or work experience um, are ways to bridge that gap. <coughs> now, did you know this? Three out of 30, 10% of the U.S. Three out of the 30 general managers in Major League Baseball. Antonetti, Sherrington, and Huntington. Okay, the next section of the book, section four, has organizational charts. All right? Um, now, you can't, you probably can't read that, but let me tell you why these are important, why you should look at these. If you're interested in a particular industry, and this one, as you can see, is the Boston Celtics professional basketball team, a lot of the students I talk to can't answer the question, well, what do you want to do? What do you want to do in that organization? Okay? Well, one way to find out the various kinds of jobs in an organization is to look at an organizational chart. Okay? So there's a number of organizational charts in there. The other reason that's important is that most people will go up the ladder. So in other words, they will go up this way through an organizational chart. It's easier to go within a particular area. So if you're in tickets, you stay in tickets and you move up, as opposed to jumping around. Last section has sample and actual internship and job descriptions. Let me just tell you a few things to look at when you get into these things and what you should be looking at. This is a current job description, internship. Sample internship description. Boston College. So some of the things that I've highlighted in here that are important. This is an internship. It's full time. There are benefits, and and, uh, and you'll and you'll see that that is very valuable. It's a ten month position. The pay fourteen hundred per month, and most internships are not paid. Okay. Starting date May first, two thousand twelve. Okay. So those are some of the things that you should be looking at when you look at these. Next, responsibilities and requirements. So, bachelor's degree required. Okay? So, this is not for someone who is looking to do something between their junior and senior year. Okay? You have to have a bachelor's degree for this. Okay? For someone who's graduating and is finished up, this is something you should look at. Now, let's look at this. Requirements. Proven telemarketing, appointment schedule, and cultivating <coughs> techniques preferred. Documented leadership, time management, and interpersonal skills. Okay? Do you have those types of things? Are you going to get those things in the classroom? Probably not. Okay? So look at what you're going to need to have when you're applying for these types of positions. So especially those of you who are freshmen, sophomores, you have plenty of time now to put these things on your resume so that you're in a position to be considered for these types of positions.